One of the biggest headlines this past week has been the whole situation with Doom Eternal composer Mick Gordon, who was accused back in May of 2020 by executive producer at IT Software, Marty Stratton, of being difficult to work with, of not submitting work on time, and this is claimed to be the reason for why the Doom Eternal OST launched in such a poor state. This open letter by Marty Stratton essentially puts all of the blame on Mick Gordon's inability to deliver work on time and claims that that caused its software to have to improvise despite them being generous with deadlines. They had to ultimately get something out there because of consumer protection laws, so they took matters into their own hands and ultimately had to ship a substandard product. And for the longest time, many people unquestioningly believed Marty Stratton because Mick Gordon didn't respond in a timely fashion, but two and a half years later, Mick Gordon would tweet this, Marty Stratton, its software studio director, lied about Doom Eternal's OST events in a red post that used disinformation to blame me entirely for its failure. Later, he offered me a six-figure sum to never speak about about it. The truth is more important. And this Medium post right here I covered in a video titled It's Software Accused of Lies and Abuse by Doom Eternal Composer Mick Gordon. It's an hour long because there's just so much information in this Medium post right here. Full statement regarding Doom Eternal. I mean, you can scroll through this for quite a while before you reach the end. For those who want a summary, essentially Mick Gordon explains that the reason that he didn't come out sooner was because he really did try to make all this work. He tried to deal with its software, with Marty Strand, with Bethesda, Xanamax behind the scenes. It wasn't until he felt like this was the last resort that he decided to release this statement as a defense based on the sequence of events that played out from his perspective. In this Medium post, Mick Gordon accuses Marty Strand especially, but also elements within its software and Bethesda of unreasonable schedule, late contracts, late gameplay materials required to make the music, and impossible situations that led to months of intense crunch. He accuses them of poor, untimely, at times non-existent, and often hostile communication that led to frequent blindsiding, stress, scapegoating, and wasted work, a lack of consideration for mixed feedback, suggestions, and alternative plans that warned of all of the struggles the game's music development faced. Months without pay is something that's brought up where apparently at one point Mick Gordon went up to 11 months without getting paid by it software for the work that he's done. They're accused of outright deception, manipulation, and exploitation with Mick bringing up the illicit commercial use of initially rejected music that Mick wasn't paid for. Mick gets paid by the minutes shipped, essentially. Mick was under the impression that two hours and 22 minutes of his music were finalized, approved, and shipped, but what ended up being used was actually a total of four hours, 46 minutes, and one seconds worth of music. It software apparently ended up using a bunch of rejected tracks and the like without Mick Gordon's permission and without paying him for those extra hours of music that, if they were commercially used, need to be paid for. And then another form of deception, manipulation, and exploitation that Mick brings up is the Reddit post in question, which he claims misinterpreted behind-the-scenes occurrences and shifted the blame of Doom Eternal OST's lackluster quality to Mick without fully representing the facts, leading to severe damage to Mick's reputation and a barrage of harassment and threats. He accused them of engaging in bad faith negotiations alongside legal threats and maneuvering that aimed to screw Mick over, including constant stalling when Mick refused to bend the knee on an attempted gag order. Basically, the DOS will pay you a six-figure sum if you shut up about everything that happens behind the scenes. And one thing that was made non-negotiable was that the Reddit post that is now being called into question would remain up, it would not be removed, it would not be demanded to be removed, and that Mick Gordon would never speak out about it and its validity. To make a long story short, Mick Gordon essentially accused Marty Stratton and various elements of management within its software, Bethesda, and Xenomax of abuse and of defamation. Which finally brings us to today, November 16th, 2022, where Bethesda decided to respond with this PR statement that has not garnered a whole lot of support. While the jury's still out on the full truth and whether Bethesda, its software, Xanamax, Marty Stratton have receipts to be able to refute what Mick Gordon claims in his Medium post and the receipts that he showed, this press release is one of the worst ways that Bethesda could have handled this. It makes it that much more difficult to give them the benefit of the doubt. I mean, you can already tell which side has more support based on the ratio of likes on this Twitter post 
Bethesda's post here has almost 15,000 likes. Mick Gordon, who retorted by essentially reposting what he tweeted back in November 9th, 2022. And this post has already garnered over 32,000 likes, and it has been up for less time than Bethesda's own post. Already has more than double. Now, unlike Bethesda's stinker of a PR statement, you know what doesn't suck? Dry feet, which is why I've been daily driving these Vessi shoes from the sponsor of today's video due to their stylish, multi-purpose, and waterproof conveniences. Not only do I really like their design, I also genuinely love how easy they are to slip on and how well they fit thanks to its stretchy and flexible material and how comfortable and lightweight they are to wear and move around with. But its main attraction is that it's completely waterproof, not water resistant, waterproof. To make sure the product lived up to what it advertised, I did all kinds of tests and experiments, from using paper towels while water was running on the shoes to rummaging inside the shoes for any signs of moisture. And you can see for yourself that not a drop of water seeps through. If you live in a rainy area where water splattage and shallow puddles are commonplace, or if you're preparing for a snow-heavy winter, these will go a long way in keeping your feet and toes dry and comfortable. At the same time, it doesn't feel like your feet are being suffocated thanks to the patented Dymatex material Vessi uses for their shoes, which was designed to be breathable. The material also adapts to the surrounding temperature, so in the cold winter, it'll help keep your feet warm, while in the hot summer, it'll help let heat and sweat escape. Vessi shoes are also 100% vegan. The soles were made to be grippy and all-purpose for all types of weather and terrain, and the manufacturing process of Vessi shoes focuses on reducing carbon footprint. If you're in the market for fresh, stylish, comfortable, new waterproof shoes, take advantage of the early Black Friday sales going on right now by using my URL vessi.com slash yongye, and the first 100 to use my code SOCKSYONGYE will get free socks along with their purchase. Maybe Bethesda could use some of these shoes with this statement right here being the PR equivalent of stepping in a mud puddle. All right, so let's check out the statement proper. It begins by saying that the recent post by Mick Gordon both mischaracterized and misrepresented the team at IT Software, the development of Doom Eternal, Marty Stratton, and Chad Mossholder with a one-sided and unjust account of an irreparable professional relationship. It is rather hypocritical for Bethesda to wag the finger about a one-sided account when it was Marty Stratton who initiated this whole public affair, this whole debacle, by taking to Reddit of all places to post this open letter that is very much a one-sided account. They're reprimanding Mick Gordon for engaging in the way that it software's Marty Stratton did first before Mick Gordon felt like he had to defend himself by retorting with his own response with his own account. Look, again, I don't know what's 100% the truth. I wasn't there. This is not me ruling out the possibility that Bethesda, it software, Marty Stratton, and Xanamax might be able to present evidence that refutes aspects of Mick Gordon's account. But when their first paragraph is this hypocritical, it really doesn't help their public standing. It really doesn't help PR, it doesn't help optics. It doesn't help them garner support or benefit of the doubt. The statement continues, we are aware of all the details and history in this matter and unequivocally support Marty, Chad, and the team at IT Software. We reject a distortion of the truth and selective presentation of incomplete facts, they put in quotes. We stand ready with full and complete documented evidence disclosed. The statement is clearly engaging in sarcasm. There is an attitude oozing from it and that'd be fine if this press release presented evidence that proved that Mick Gordon was in the wrong, that he wasn't presenting the facts as they should be, that he's mischaracterizing everything. But this is all they've released, this statement right here. They haven't disproved anything that Mick Gordon has said. So for them to act like they're in some kind of high ground right now when the burden of proof lies on them now, given Mick did present ample evidence, maybe not all of it definitive per se, but plenty that seem to indicate that his side of the story is definitely worth paying attention to, when Bethesda has nothing to refute that at this moment, for them to come off with this unprofessional attitude while they're still on trial, if you will, in the eyes of the public, it's just a really bad look. Seriously, who wrote this PR statement? Now, here's an interesting bit. We stand ready with full and complete documented evidence to disclose in an appropriate venue as needed. So there are a couple potential implications here. One being that by appropriate venue, they might be referring to the court of law. Maybe their intention is to sue Mick Gordon for, I don't know, defamation, libel, whatever it might be. And maybe that's where they intend to pull all stops when it comes to this alleged documented evidence that they have against Mick Gordon. I'll certainly be on the lookout for that if that's how things transpire and keep you guys updated. The other implication that comes across when they say that we're going to show evidence in an appropriate venue is that they believe it was inappropriate for Mick Gordon to release this 
public statement through medium and compile evidence in this way and make a whole public circus out of it when once more it was it software's marty stratton who began with this kind of engagement and he did so on reddit one of the most informal forums you could do this in one where toxicity hate and harassment can very quickly flare up if bethesda believes that mick gordon's way of presenting his account was not appropriate if they believe that medium was an inappropriate venue then bethesda should also be calling out their own marty stratton for engaging in this way first through I'd say an even worse public forum for that kind of stuff. It's just incredibly hypocritical for them to be like, we support Marty fully, but also screw Mick Gordon for doing the things Marty Stratton did. This is very much a case of Marty Stratton started it and put Mick Gordon in a position where he had to respond in this way. So Bethesda to castigate that is just regardless of, you know, what we ultimately find out the truth is in the long term as more evidence comes out. Again, this PR statement sucks. Bethesda's response continues. The statements posted online have incited harassment and threats of violence against Marty, Chad, and the It Software team. Any threats or harassment directed towards members of our teams will be met with swift and appropriate action to protect their health and safety, as it should be. But this is yet another hypocritical paragraph where they talk about the harassment and threats that was incited against folks here when Marty Strand did exactly the same thing by going to Reddit, of all places, to publicly engage in the Medium post itself, there's a whole section dedicated to how psychotic fans shared Mick Gordon's personal details via message boards, email bombed his inboxes, harassed his other clients with attempts to get him fired, called his phone numbers around the clock, screaming messages full of abuse, expressions of violence, the content so vivid it made me sick. I'm not going to read this stuff right here out loud, but you can get a sense for how horrible the stuff he received was by just gleaning at this, it really started to wear me down in ways I couldn't previously imagine. This is what Marty Stratton did to Mick Gordon. Now, the unfortunate reality of the internet is that when people try to present an argument or case against someone who they feel wrong them, the internet just gets fired up and they start engaging in this sort of unconstructive, toxic way that doesn't help the situation at all. In the same way that I do believe that Marty Stratton wasn't reveling in the possibility that Mick Gordon was getting death threats, I don't believe that Mick Gordon, in putting out his statement, was trying to incite harassment and threats. In fact, Mick makes it a point to highlight that this statement is not an excuse for a hate campaign. Acts of hate dished out online won't result in any positive change. In fact, it only makes things worse, which I absolutely agree with. And he even followed up on that in this tweet right here, published on November 10th, that reads, To those taking action against the game, please spare a thought for all the talented people who worked incredibly hard to make the game you enjoyed. The team's work, which drew critical acclaim, deserves celebration and their efforts should not be the target of a protest basically telling people folks do not review bomb do maternal let's just like discuss this issue right here and let's hope this gets resolved it wasn't all of its offer all of bethesda and all of Zenimax that screwed mick over in the way that he claims based on his account it was specific entities and it's just let's keep the issue isolated to this rather than punishing the entire team by review bombing this game that was made by more than just the folks responsible for mixed situation. Now, Bethesda's statement does conclude by saying, let's not harass anyone, including folks from our team and also Mick Gordon, folks on either side. We remain incredibly proud of its previous collaborations with Mick Gordon and ask that fans refrain from reaching conclusions based on his account and more importantly, from attacking any of the individuals mentioned on either side, including Marty, Chad, or Mick. I do think that now with Bethesda saying that we have documented evidence, we should maybe wait for that evidence to come out before drawing definitive conclusions, but people are going to gravitate one direction or another based on the information that's out there. And the multiple layers of hypocrisy here is not going to help Bethesda garner favor in the eyes of the public, especially because as things currently stand, Mick Gordon is the one who's shown the most receipts. Again, not all of it is fully definitive, but Bethesda has shown nothing, and they're saying that we'll disclose our stuff at the appropriate venue and it's like, you got to show something if you're going to come out with an attitude or you're going to come out with such declarations. I don't know what they thought this PR statement would do. All it did was kindle the fire further. They would have been better off not releasing this PR statement at all and taking their time to compile whatever documented evidence they may have presenting that and then let the people or the court of law, if that's what we're going, decide on 
what ultimately transpired and who was in the wrong here. Or if it's a matter of needing more time, at the very least put out a more professional statement asking for people's understanding to hold off until we're able to gather all of the evidence and show you our side of the story. Like, without the hypocrisy, without the attitude, without the high horse that you haven't earned yet because you haven't presented counter evidence to show us that Mick Gordon completely mischaracterized things. Now, Mick Gordon isn't backing down from his stance. He responded to Bethesda by, again, essentially echoing the Medium post that has already gone viral and has kind of gone viral again because of this 33,000 likes ratio compared to Bethesda's uh, almost 15,000 likes with their statement. And a lot of pundits in the games industry have been responding to Bethesda by saying, hey guys, this ain't it. This is not a good look. Jack Septicai responded to Bethesda by saying, Mick had some pretty damning evidence and tons of receipts. This doesn't disprove any of it. Marty threw stones first and Mick even told people not to harass anyone, something he wasn't afforded. Here's skill up tweeting, I don't know what's true here, but it's extremely hypocritical of Bethesda to accuse Mick Gordon of putting out a one-sided account on an inappropriate venue when Mick's statement was literally his side of a story that started as a Reddit post. This is Mick's deserved right of reply. And before recording this video, I sort of put out this tweet, Bethesda reprimanding Mick Gordon for daring to present his one-sided account that incited harassment while pretending like its software's Marty Stratton wasn't the one who initiated this whole public fiasco by posting on Reddit his one-sided account that incited harassment. If Bethesda truly believes that they're being mischaracterized, you don't help that situation by posting a PR statement like this and by getting on a high horse before you're able to present your own evidence that's able to refute what is currently the more compelling evidence from Mick Gordon. I do think there are definitely gonna be investigative reports in the coming days, weeks, or months, and hopefully that'll shed enough of a light where we can put a bow on this and determine who was ultimately the party in the wrong here. I'm not going to draw any definitive conclusions right now. We all learned from the Helena Taylor situation that that's the last thing we should do. But Bethesda, you're really making it hard to look at you in a positive light in all of this currently. And you know, at the end of the day, I do want the truth to be unraveled. And I do want the party that engaged in bad faith and that was ultimately the sort of perpetrator and instigator of this whole situation to face the consequences of their actions. If Mick Gordon was abused and mischaracterized the way that he claims, Marty Stratton should not be working at Bethesda, should not be executive producer, should not be at its software. If Mick Gordon turns out to have mischaracterized things, then yeah, he's done. But unlike Helena Taylor, who presented very sort of vague facts and terms and situations, what Mick Gordon presented was a very detailed account. So I do think that Mick Gordon's account warrants a lot more consideration than, say, Helena Taylor's did. But with that said, only time will tell. For now, though, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on Bethesda's PR statement, whether you think it was appropriate for them to say what they did or whether you think it ultimately damaged their ability to control the public perception surrounding Bethesda and its software and Marty Stratton. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.